Hello, hello, hello. I am hip hop artist Frankie Bars, and I got the keys to the DC Young Democrats. And I also got the keys to the hip hop artists of DC. And I wear this hat because I am the host. But before we begin today's story, I'd like to remind you to follow me on social media. On YouTube, that's Frankie Bars. On Twitter, that's Frankie Bars. And also Instagram is I am Frankie Bars. And Facebook, I am Frankie Bars. Spelt F-R-A-N-K-E-Y. K-E-Y, key as in I'm coming in the dough. Bars starts with the B, B as in boy. B-A-R-R-Z. B-A-R-R-Z. Now for today's story. First, we're going to take you to the Broccoli Bar, where you're going to connect with hip-hop artist Pinky Killer Corn. Now, Pinky Killer Corn had an album listening party where many different leaders of the community, many different entrepreneurs and influencers of our culture in D.C. came out, came out to connect with Pinky Killer Corn and celebrate and listen to the album Pinky and the Pain as we celebrate hip-hop and the culture moving forward in Washington, D.C. I'm going to introduce you to some law influencers, policy influencers of the laws in Washington, D.C., who is none other than the D.C. Young Democrats. Now let's go to the D.C. Young Democrats event and visit your newly elected president of the D.C. Young Dems, Marcus Goodwin. Uptown Northwest, born and raised, your cherry mom. We are here at my listening session for my new album titled Pinky in the Pain. Um, how do I feel that politics affects or add values to hip hop in Washington, D.C.? Well, I'm not really a political person, but um, I can say that it allows the hip hop, my music allows me to express myself and be against all the political bullshit that I'm not for. Um, we do have our, we have like a different generation now that are, I don't want to say more woke, but more involved, care more, want to see a change, and I believe that music is one of the best tools to use to get the people that way. I say, hold up! 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 now ready to move on to speeches for the last office of the evening, uh, speeches for president. And we will start with Marcus Goodwin. Good evening. My name is Marcus Goodwin and I'm running for president of the DC Young Democrats. First, I want to ensure that we're well organized. The organization is critically important in terms of our programming, how we're structured, and how we go about programmatically fulfilling our mission, training young people for advocacy, getting around issues that are important to young people, and ensuring that going forward, we have the greatest voice to advocate for our issues. Secondly, information. I want to ensure that we let everyone know who's a young Democrat across the city, not just the folks who are hyper-engaged like us, who show up in a polar vortex to vote, but everyone else who may be sitting at home, may be posting from Instagram, and don't know the ways to engage in changing legislation. We want to make sure they know when every meeting is, when every outreach attempt is, and when every volunteer opportunity is. Finally, elevation. I want to ensure that we elevate the voice 
and the impact of DC Young Democrats. That means allowing everyone who isn't on the executive board an opportunity to step up and participate, but also that we have a voice in print media, television media, radio, social media, and every manner in which it's important for us to get our voice out. The issues that are important to our generation are underrepresented. In the Democratic primary, I looked at the numbers. Only 5% of people in our demographic group, age 18 to 35, voted in the primary. But 51% of people over the age of 65 who were registered showed up to vote. That's a problem, and we need to bridge that gap. We have the means of communication to do it, and I hope, as your president, I can work with the oncoming executive board, learn from the outgoing executive board, and elevate us forward. So please, Marcus Goodwin's my name, running for president with the elevation slate. Chica Reed, Spencer Gopal, Brandon Fry, Marcus Goodwin. Thank you. So thank you, thank you, Kevin, for everything you've done for the group. I look forward to learning under your tutelage Absolutely. how to structure, organize, and ensure that the three things I talked about in the speech are lived through throughout the next year. I also want to ensure that everyone who ran has an opportunity to contribute. So we're going to talk at the first and following meeting about ensuring that everyone has a role and can contribute. We want to ensure that everyone's energy is continued uh, leverage going forward so that we promote the democratic ideals that this organization is founded around and we can start to engage with YDA, Young Democrats of America, nationally and get other people from other states involved in our battles like the one for statehood. So I'm excited. I'm happy to work with everyone. I'm happy to give everyone my phone number and email and ensure that this transition goes smoothly, smoothly and this becomes a better and better group than it's what, it, what it's been in the past and we stand on the platform that they've built. So thank you guys. I look forward to the future. My name is Marcus Goodwin. I just won the election for president of the DC Young Democrats. I'm excited to work with our executive board. It was an incredible, intense process. I'm happy that I'm here in this position because I want to focus on three things to make this a better organization that advocates for the issues that are important to people 35 and under. I want to focus on first, organization, ensuring that our executive board has roles that help us advance the issues that are important to people 35 and under. We need to be represented in democratic politics in the city and nationally. And I want to ensure that we have an organization that has consistent meetings and has roles to help us fulfill that mission. Second, information. I want us to be able to show everyone what we're doing on a consistent basis, have the information for outreach, for volunteering, and for training on advocacy, ensuring that people know how to get legislation drafted, how to testify before the DC Council, and ensuring that everyone who's a member is a part of the process engaging people around the city. The third point is elevation. I want to ensure that we elevate this platform of DC Young Democrats so that anyone who has issues that are important to them and are important across people all of our generation, age 35 and younger, has access to print media, television media, radio, social media, and every manner of getting out to people, canvassing neighborhoods. So I want to ensure that we elevate DCYD to a higher level from where it is. So I look forward to working with our existing executive board outgoing and ensure we learn from everything that they've done and use this DCYD platform and leverage it so that our issues are spotlighted around the country. I also want to ensure that we work with Young Democrats of America, the other states and territories in the United States, and help bring other people in to the fight for statehood. It's going to take young people, not just in D.C., but in Montana, California, Texas, Florida, all thinking and talking about our voter disenfranchisement here locally. I'm a D.C. native. I've been disenfranchised from representation in national politics my whole life, as of my seven, seven siblings, my mother, my father, and extended family. I want to ensure that we change that, and I think DCYD is the platform to do it. So I'm excited to get to work. Statehood will allow us to play a more active role in our democracy, unfeathered by congressional and federal oversight. 
It will distinguish between federal Washington and local D.C. geographically so that we, D.C. citizens, can gain a clearer understanding of the distinction between government and politics. And hopefully, we will make it more of a reality for all Americans. And we're back from the D.C. Young Dems event where you got to see your current elected president of the D.C. Young Dems, Marcus Goodwin, win this victory. And you also got to visit the Broccoli Bar listening, getting a little snippet of Pinky and the Pain, the current album released from D.C.'s own hip-hop artist, Pinky Killer Corn. I'm going to take you back to the D.C. Young Dems event and let you talk with and connect with the current elected committee woman of the D.C. Young Dems, Sheikha Reed. Now, Sheikha Reed is the current elected committee woman of the D.C. Young Dems. We're going to see her story and see history being made as she gained this new seat and also affects and supports D.C. statehood. And you're also going to connect with Grindstone back at the Broccoli Bar, our Pinky Killer Corns listening session where Grindstone, a very influential community leader and creator through fashion and hip hop and many other genres in DC is gonna speak with you about how art and policy affect each other. So let's go visit Sheikha Reed and Grindstone cause we work so hard for it. Is this thing on? Nope. Hi, how are you? How's everybody doing? I said, how y'all doing? All right, good. My name is Sheikha Reed, and I'm running to be your DC Young Dems committee woman. I'm running because I think the DC Young Dems has a lot of capacity to leverage our location here in the nation's capital to reach out to congressmen and senators and to be able to do events to train people on how to run for office, how to run campaigns, how to lobby on Capitol Hill, how to lobby down in our Wilson building. But our democracy doesn't work if we don't. I think there's so much that we can do, and I'm excited to put the DC Young Dems to work. So I'm asking for your vote humbly. Please, I'll be in the back. Ask me any questions that you might have. I'm a DC native, uh, Ward 1 resident, and I've been in DC for my entire life. My family has a real estate company. Um, many of you know me from my race for the Ward 1 seat on the council. I wasn't successful, but I learned so much, and I have so much to share, and I'm really excited about having this opportunity. Also, I'm running on a slate called the Elevation Slate. So, um, Marcus Goodwin is running for president. I have Brandon Fry running for the VP of Finance and Administration. And I have Spencer Gopal running for executive VP as well. So, one more time, my name is Sheikha Reed. I'm running for committee woman. And I'm asking for your vote today. Thank you. National committee woman. Hawk had 73. Reed had 80. Congratulations, Sheikha Reed. Hey, um, I'm Sheikha Reed, and I just won the election for committee woman for the DC Young Dems. My vision is to engage young voters and train them on how to run campaigns and how to lobby for the issues that matter most to them, like student loan debt relief, you know, affordable health care access, and um, just the issues that matter most. I mean, I think that that's constantly changing and evolving, but if you have the tools to be able to advocate for yourself, we have a better democracy than we are. Um, ways that the DC Young Dems can better engage with the artist community would be to make sure that we're using art as a tool to reach, you know, the masses and to be able to engage more people and make, you know, policy more exciting. A lot of times people get bored with, you know, uh, politics, but I think when you have, you know, music or a mural or you have, you know, poetry, um, you can really excite you know, some of the, you're boring, like this could have been a cool event if we had like a poet open up about how important voting and democracy is. So I have some great ideas for the next four years and I'm really thankful that I won and I'm really proud of my slate and um, for all the hard work we did and, for, and really excited about everyone who won and really proud of Spencer. All right, thanks. 
This, so this project, for those of you all who are familiar with Kiki, this project is very different from her regular music. And I'm honored to be part of it as the captain of Grindstone Music with the number one player in the city, Kiki Hillcorn. This album is something that you got to listen to because it's like a journal. It's like a, a diary. She ain't out in the street about to whoop your ass for this. She's vulnerable. Oh, wow. And Kiki is a pain. Okay, so for all of you all, all of you all who got to listen to this album, so all, of, all of you all who are in touch with yourself on the real side and you ain't afraid to be who you are emotionally, this album has something for you. And for those of you all who are hard as hell and you're afraid to be yourself, this is what you need to be listening to Crack the Head. So on this album, we have, we don't have rapper guest appearances, but we have for the gamers out there, we have the villain Maxwell Ross from Assassin's Creed. He's the narrator of somebody, and so if you don't know about it, your kid does, if you have a kid, your nephew or niece does, but uh, he's kind of turned it up a little bit on it. So I want you to listen to it with an understanding that this album is an album, it's a movement, it's not just like, it's not like a mixtape. Okay, so everything that goes, everything that's there, is there for a reason, and it was written with passion and vulnerability. That's my fucking word in 2019. At least when it's been cold, we all vulnerable. But without further ado, Pinky's gonna be on the mic more than I am. She gonna walk you through it. Welcome to Pinky and the Pain. Man, well, I think the politics of the politics of Washington D.C. affects the hip hop of Washington D.C. because of the fact that it's a lot of pain from the inequity, and you hear that in a lot of the music. But now you also have people addressing specifically some of the things in, in the in the politics that create the climate and the reason why uh, everybody's getting down like they are. So, especially with my man uh, Yachty, he was just out in front of the White House for like 150 days straight with live music, protesting the presidency and the government. So I think that the, the action that people are serving, not only in the face of the government, but in their music, you hear the effects of it, and then people are articulate enough to explain the cause of it. So you got me, you got the Crossroads, you got uh, Yachty, we got several people who uh, are directly affected and are afraid to speak on it, and it's beautiful. Yes, and we're back. But first, I want to thank and give a big, big, warm thank you to Complex Inc., the media company that creates all the media for Frankie Bars and specializing in creating media within art and policy, encouraging, encouraging social equality through television, video, and music, Complex Inc., Complex Incorporated, with the crown as the dot. Now it's time to move on to our next guest. Now our next guest is community leader Jackie Lewenthal. Now Jackie Lewenthal works for a company called Justin Bradley. Now what Justin Bradley does is provide business talent to different organizations in the city to fulfill their needs and different creative ways to provide different creative business talent to provide the creative and artistic needs in particular for the particular organization. And we're also going to take you to the African American Civil War Memorial Museum and connect with Mr. Black History himself, Chuck Hicks. Now, Chuck Hicks hosted an event with keynote speaker, Attorney General Carl Racine, hosted by Aaron Holmes, also has a special guest, Phil Mendelson, who is the chair of our council. So let's go visit Jackie Lewenthal and let's go to visit Mr. Black History. Charles Hicks.
they say good evening, everybody. Good evening. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. I appreciate that energy. It feels really, really good up here. Before we get into the program, the first thing I have to do is really, really uh, shine a light on Mr. Hicks. Now, I'm going to do this at the front end and the back end of the program so that everybody is prepared for it. But it is extremely important that we celebrate Chuck Hicks. Chuck Hicks goes through a lot to put these programs together and make sure that we are recognizing the accomplishments, not just of folks today, but those who have preceded us to this moment. So before we go any further, can I please get one round of applause for the young man at the end of the row here? <laughs> one of the things that's important about the arts is their role in terms of being active in the civil rights movement, in terms of telling the stories and the struggles of black people, uh, culturally, educationally, uh, sports-wise, intellectually. Um, County Collins once said that uh, he wished that he could sing and dance and sing joyfully about uh, his art. But because he was black and he could not, he did not have the freedom to feel free, but he uses his art to tell the story of the struggle of black people in the arts. So the art, the art speaks to us more than any other group in the, in the country uh, in terms of our, uh, our struggle, be it music, uh, go down Moses, I feel like a motherless child, to a uh, beard and a and, uh, struggle of black people, uh, drawings of the Civil War, the struggles of Frederick Douglass, uh, to uh, gospel music, to blues, you know, Blue Monday, all those kinds of songs uh, tells the story uh, in terms of all the struggle and no play. Nobody does it better than the arts. And so the arts is more important to us. It tells more of a story than any other group, more than educationally, more than socially. Art speaks to itself. It's like Avanelli can make dance talk. When you see Avanelli and you see uh, Judy Jefferson dance cry, you see her when she's wearing that shawl and she's walking the street as a, as a whore, and then all of a sudden she wraps it up when that man is beating her, then she's scrubbing the floor as a black woman, and then when she's walking proudly, that's, that's art speaking to you. And so art has always been and will always be an important factor in our, in our survival, and that's telling the story for black history. My name is Jackie Lewenthal. I'm currently at the D.C. Young Democrats election event. So I work for a small business. It's called Justin Bradley. I'm about one of ten employees. My team is made up of four, and I am one of four. So what I typically do is um, I will search for people on social media, social media platforms such as um, Twitter, Instagram, if I'm focusing on creative. So I will look for somebody's portfolio. And if it sticks out, what I will do is find their contact information. Um, there are websites such as Zoom Info that can provide that information to you. Reach out to them and see if they're you know, open to opportunities, would like to take on a new project. And if so, I would have a conversation with them, um, have them discuss their background, their portfolio, why they're doing what they're doing, and where they see themselves in the future. And you know, if they think that the position I'm working on is a good fit, I will work alongside them and submit them to that client. I will, I, I'm there with them. I'm not just somebody that comes in and out of their life. And even if they don't get the job, I still work with them to find something else that they would align with what they're looking for and their background and their passion. So that is the process. A lot of job boards, a lot of LinkedIn, a lot of Indeed, sometimes career builder and zip recruiter. So if you ever post your resume online, people recruiters do look at it. So please put yourself out there, especially on LinkedIn, because then you'll have people reach out to you that you never would have thought would have in the first place. So that's how we find them. It's a process. Statehood will allow us to play a more active role in our democracy, unfeathered by congressional and federal oversight. It will distinguish between federal Washington and local D.C. geographically so that we, D.C. citizens, can gain a clearer understanding of the distinction between government and politics. And hopefully, we will make it more of a reality for all Americans. Thank you.
dope beats. This for the DC Young Dems and hip hop. My city. And you know it's time. It's time to kill it. Saw Howard, that's green line. Just left from the broccoli bar. Checking back on my sales app, confirming what my profits are. Constitution Avenue, from the place of the museum. African American, I got the keys to the museum. In my code, I told it, where this hat because I voted. Leave the polls and go get some papers, then we roll it. Moved a couple, then I bought my first iPhone. Working hard as a rock, that's a grindstone. Packed it in the tube, what we call a cyclone. THC got my mind blown. Hustle by the monuments of marble mahogany. Secrecy is the code, so we call out autonomy. Pretty artists, I leave with two. Work with Pinky and Diva too. To the party, just bring it through. Red wine or some Reaper too. Blue dream, well, I dream is blue. Young Dems, all I see is blue. Ain't by the book, but I still read. So that means I would seek a two. Streets and politics. Up in Brooklyn, Marcus for president, that's a good win, CIA swag, I pull up in the suit, never miss, always kill it, why they pay me to shoot, with some DC OGs, aggressive and brute, if you fake it the boot, hustle hard for the loot, G-Dub, born in the back, in the yo, recording the stack, colors up July 4th on my hat, that's what it's like if a lawyer can rap, and I've been, working hard as a rock, that's a grindstone, yeah, yeah, and it's the Frankie Bar show, I wear this hat cause it's my show. It's the Frankie Bar show, I wear this hat cause I'm the host. Ghost. <laughs>